okay, right? I don't know why that part's not staying. That's usually tight. Let me do that. I know why. I, I got it now. All right, don't worry. We're getting it. We're getting it. Don't worry, people. We're getting it. <laughs> we're going to keep all of this. We're going to keep all this footage. Bro, we need the raw footage, man. Raw footage. You guys got to see behind the scenes. Like, Look, man, we're not, we're not ready, man. We're not going to be fancy like these other guys. One, we don't have a big team like that yet, but... You know, we like to, I like to keep things raw. That's kind of my brand. Is it's nice to have all the flashy stuff from time to time, and you know, a name come across or like a hand, IG handle. But a lot of the editors out there, they get super flashy. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, nah, people just want to hear. People just want to hear it raw. So uh, you know, I say it all the time, bro. I'm like, my one video or my two videos that I post, or however many videos I post, will always outperform someone who's just on the sideline thinking about doing a video. And a lot of people get caught up in the, oh, I need to have a perfect video. Oh, I need to have perfect audio. Oh, I need to have, you know, perfect subtitles. And don't get me wrong, I want the, I want it to be perfect too. But I'd rather put some content out that somebody's going to take, you know, have one takeaway versus no takeaway. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, the other day when I posted on the Jacksonville deal, I did a step-by-step a -step breakdown of... You know, do your internet, do your business, uh, set up your business account, you know, and I have all these step-by-step, -step, you know, real quick guides on my stories on IG. You know, one of the ladies reached out to me and said, wow, this is super helpful. I had two people reach out to me. Yeah. Yo, this is super helpful, you know. Yeah. Now, we're gonna have a, now you're creating a new student guide. Not a new, well, a new student guide, but that's going to go into the Passport mini course to give more people that checklist. Yes. Like, hey, okay, great. You've acquired a property. You've purchased it. You've got your company. Like, what's next? Like, what do you do next? And, yeah. You know, yeah. So where are we so where are we at on the property right now? Let's give the so, audience an update. So I've closed on the property last Wednesday. I haven't even owned this damn thing for a week. And we are about sixty five percent done with the build out of the bedrooms that we have added. So it's a three bedroom, two bath, and we converted it into an eight bedroom, two bath. All those studs are up, all the drywalls up, insulation are in the walls. Uh, my electrical guys and uh, my HVAC guys will be there today to move the um, the uh, the air and, and you know because we have to add air in a few rooms so we're going to use one central AC unit for the whole entire house um, and what I did was I added where we put up walls and it became real dark where there's hallways um, we added recessed lighting as well to lighten up those areas to make sure that we have adequate lighting for those small areas. So today we're going to go and we're going to meet with the contractors. They're actually going to be there working. And funny enough, I don't know if I told you this, but one of my contractors is so curious about what I'm doing. Yeah, you told me about He's this. not even, he. This, this is the head guy. He's going out of his way to meet me today to pick my brain. Not even kidding you. Is this the guy that we the, the got guy. on the film? Yeah, yeah. He, dude, so, he, so, got him. so you hired him and his crew and he's bro, like, he's I want to learn more. Bro, he's been excellent. That's awesome. He's been excellent. Uh, when he first, when I first interviewed and I always talk to people, um, when I'm interviewing people yeah. and I'm getting these contractors off of like TaskRabbit and, mm -hmm. and Thumbtack, I got this guy off Thumbtack and he showed up. He's about five minutes late. Okay, not, not a big deal, right? But he showed up. He was in a, you know, a nice truck. It wasn't marked. Some people don't like marked vehicles, but like what I what I what I preach to people is when you're hiring and going through and these contractors, make sure that you're looking at their licensings. Make sure you're looking at their their insurance. Make sure you're asking them for their W nine because you're going to be paying them over six hundred dollars, and you need a W nine for these guys, right? Or, or they're going to give a ten ninety nine at the end of the year. So you ask them for a W nine form, and your accountant will give them a ten ninety nine because you're paying them over six hundred dollars. Anytime you're paying us a contract over six hundred dollars, you need to be ten ninety nine in them. But anyways, when you're looking at all the things, are they in a mark card? Do they have mark shirts? Are they doing SEO ads? Um, do they have good references and good reviews? After you've been doing this for a while, you you, you kind of get a chemistry of if it's going to be a good contractor and what red flags to look for. You know, like I said, if the guy pulled up with a weed eater hanging outside of his window <laughs> and, you know, the car was all busted up, I'd have never even hired him. You know, um, a lot of contractors have been doing this so long, like for him, he's been doing this so long. He works for a lot of new construction builders, which was actually a red flag to me at first because if you're working with new construction builders, those guys are keeping you really, really, really busy. So why would you want to take on a small project like I have? Like, what's the point? Maybe it's to keep your crew busy. I don't really know. But to me, I feel like contractors are really busy with home builders because they're building homes like hotcakes. 
So that was a red flag to me, but I felt him out. I, I, you know, I talked to him back and forth. He wrote me a quote. Um, you know, I rebuttaled him a couple of things on the quote. It ended up coming out to he put up um, he put up one, two, three, four. Five, uh, he put up four bedrooms for me, but he put up multiple walls and insulation in other places. Um, and he is um, he ripped out two vanities and he's redoing the drywall in the bathroom where he ripped out the old medicine cabinet. So what I did with the bathrooms, and you guys might have seen on the previous video, I, I kept it really cost uh, cost efficient. And what I've done is, instead of remodeling the whole bathroom, I just ripped out the vanity, ripped out the toilet, uh, ripped out the old medicine cabinet, ripped out the light fixture, and I'm putting all that stuff brand new. And so I'm just going to reglaze the one bathroom and the other bathroom will stay as is. Because again, I don't want to go in there and have to, you know, redo a kitchen, redo all the flooring. Like when I'm acquiring these properties, they're in somewhat good condition. They're not, you know, stuff that needs to be fully rehabbed. I'm not saying you can't take down properties that are fully rehabbed, but I like my properties to be in somewhat good condition. This is what I look for in my buy box. And the reason why is because I want to get in my properties, get them renovated, pad split renovated, and get them up and running. That way I'm making money because that's, you know, when you're acquiring these properties, you're not making money day one. And that's the downfall. You're not making money day one. So I want to be able to try to get up and running. My goal for this one, Matt, bro, is I want to try to get up and running within 45 days, I would yeah. say. That means all passport renovations done, the house clean, all the furniture built and ordered, everything done. And right now, I'm actually ahead of schedule. My guys have been, I've, I've actually only owned it for, for not even a week now, and we're about 60% done. All that's really left is uh, uh, paint, texture, the HVAC guys, and the electrical to be done. Yeah. Uh, and two vanities to be installed, and uh, one toilet, or two toilets to be installed, and some small miscellaneous stuff. So, we're, we're ahead of schedule right now. Anything can happen, but... When I, when I told you guys the other day, and I posted on my, my social media, a lot of people who are in markets right now that are very expensive, like California, Seattle, I'm sure you're wondering, like, oh, wow, this is awesome business model, but how can I do this remotely? This is not my first remote project. I got another one in North Carolina that's nine hours away from me. So when it comes to remote projects, what I'm doing, first things first, is... Setting up the internet, setting up power, and putting up my ring camera, my ring cameras. That way, I can uh, monitor when contractors are showing up at the project. How long they're there for? Are they being professional? Are they? Do they have trash everywhere? So I'm putting all my ring cameras on the exterior, and then I put one to two in the interior. I got one at this property. Now, how, who's putting that up? Because when we went to this property a couple yeah. weeks ago. And you were ready to put it up, but you hadn't closed on the property yet. But you're like, I'm not coming yeah. back to put up the ring camera. Yes. So talk to me a little bit about how, like, well, or what if I can't make it to that state or that city to put it up? Who yeah. do I have put those ring cameras up? So, yeah, good question. So uh, the guys that I have doing my HVAC and I have doing my electrical, those guys I negotiated to do my ring cameras, the electrician. So he went out. Uh, he went out there specifically just to install my ring cameras and my ring doorbell. Uh, after he installed it, I asked him, hey, bro, can you log into the app? I gave him my credentials. Can you log into the app and, you know, hook up the ring camera? Because the downfall about ring is whoever has the account, this is the challenge right here. Whoever has the account, you have to be there to be able to hook up the ring cameras. Yeah. Right? And so uh, what I did was I have a lady on TaskRabbit. I hired a lady on TaskRabbit. You can actually hire errand runners on TaskRabbit. So check this out. I'm going to rewind a little bit, actually. When I went to hook up my internet, I hooked it up through uh, Xfinity. And Xfinity's rules are somebody has to be there 18 years of age or older. Now, I am live two hours away. You think I'm going to drive to Jacksonville just to go mess with internet? No. I spent... Um, I think it was like $55 with the TaskRabbit fees and all that shit. I spent $55. This lady sat at the property with the Xfinity guy. It doesn't matter who's there. Well, somebody's 18 years, years of age or older. But she was able to access the property because I was proactive. And when I closed on the property and 
I did the Jacksonville Q and A, I put a wrap box on the door, so I can have contractors go in and out at any time with their own key using the lock box. So I put a lock box on the door. She used the lock box. She met the Infinity guy there. I paid her fifty five dollars. Right? I'm buying my time back, guys, and that's the most important thing. Like you have to leverage. So she had him do the internet. That took about two hours. It was funny. On top of that, dude, the lady's pulling weeds in my front yard for free. She's like, I was just so bored. I want to pull weeds. So you'll see like some of the weeds are pulled when we get there. Yeah. But um, so she did that. Then I had my guys do the uh, install the cameras the very next day. And that's that's like first things first. So you're up and running and you can have an eye on your operation. You know people are showing up. You know for being professional. Are they cussing? Are they drinking on the job? Because remember, if you're scaling this in one particular market, you're going to want to have a good crew. And you want to know if this crew is going to be worthy to have on your next job. How are they communicating with you? How are they, how's their professionalism? Are they on time? Are they doing things that they, that they say they're going to do? Right? How's their, how's their workmanship? That's another thing I'm looking at. Like, are they making a ruckus in the neighborhood? Right. Drawing attention to the problem? Right. Are they listening to directions and stuff like that that I give them? So these are things that I'm looking for to see if I'm going to have them on another project. Now, I always let them know up front, like, hey, look, I'm an investor. I'm scaling in this market. Look at all my, my students here with me. They're, they're here with me. They're yeah, learning with cool. me. That was cool. And guess what? Not only am I buying property that I'm doing this, they're buying properties and doing this as, as well. So we're looking for, for preferred vendors in this area to do these projects with. So this kind of incentivizes them to like, wow, we want to be able to get this this group of investors under our belt so we can do future projects. It's also good because they can be, uh, what are they called, like boots on the ground? Yeah. Maybe they don't want to be investors. Maybe they just want to be the project people. Right. And maybe they see a house and maybe like you let them know like, hey, you know, we're always looking for homes like this, similar, yeah. on off market. Right. So, by the way, if you're out doing a job in a neighborhood and you come across a property, you yep. set up a way out, you get a finder's right. So now you're putting extra boots on the ground yep. to find in, in your market too, which I thought that was kind of interesting. Is like now they're because they work in Tampa, they work in Jacksonville. So yep. when I used to when I used to do acquisitions when I was wholesaling, I would always tell people this when I when I was teaching people how to wholesale, I would say, look, you can get a deal from anywhere, anywhere. Some of the best people to build relationships are mailmen. Uh-huh. What do you think about this? Mailmen and delivery drivers run the same routes, guys, every single day, right? Typically six to seven days a week. If you build relationships with these guys, you're giving them Christmas cards, you're giving them Christmas gifts, and they have your personal number, don't you think they're going to let you know when they see a for sale by owner or they see a property that's distressed? They know those neighborhoods in and out. They drive them every single day. If not, if they don't drive them, they walk them. So build relationships with those type of people to bring you deals. Give them a gift card. Give them, you know, a nurture. Like, this is, it's important when you're doing this business, and I say this time after time, it's a relationship business. It's a 120% relationship business. We're having a meetup tomorrow. Me and Matt are hosting a meetup with Ella, and she's a TC, and guess what? We're going to have 30 new relationships that in that room tomorrow. 30 new relationships are going to bring us 30 more opportunities and endless amounts of opportunities at that. They're going to bring us p they're going to bring us deals, they're going to bring us uh, business connections. And it didn't even have to be real estate related. It could be, make an example, me and him are growing a, our digital media company. We might meet somebody tomorrow and say, hey, look, we would love to be your digital media manager, or we would love to be your full-time videographer, uh-huh. right? So this is important for you guys to realize that when you go in these rooms, if you're not leaving and rubbing elbows and feeling that like you've connected with somebody, you know, get at least one or two numbers and try to connect with somebody. Make your t- like people don't understand, like don't waste your non refundable minutes. You're there, rub elbows, make sure you're connected with people, add them on social media. I like to personally add people on social media because the number thing is cool and all, but I like with social media media where if you constantly like and, and comment on their stuff They'll stay in your algorithm, and what happens is that they stay in your top of your mind. With your phone, you put them in your phone book on your in your contact list, and all of a sudden they disappear because it's like you don't you don't remember what Johnny or Bobby or Susie looks like. That's so, a great takeaway. So I like to give them. I like to add them on social media and get their phone number. But if I ever have to reach out to them, typically I reach out to them on social media first, and 
I'll look up their number, you know. So um, make sure you add people on social media, and that's super important. Yeah, I want to give the audience also a good understanding of, like, why you want to follow people on social media, because you live such in a social media world now, a digital world now, that if you don't have a digital footprint, a digital brand, I can, you know, if you go to Javier's page, you go to my page, you go to, you know, some of these bigger name pages, you can basically become friends with this person and know exactly who they are and who their character is with ne- without even having to be in the same yeah. room with them. So I, that's like the second part that I like to look at it as. Like, one, I agree with you. Being in social media, you get a face of the name. You're, you're, you're liking their content. You're seeing their stuff. You can contact them. But I look at it as, well, if I go try to find someone on Instagram or Facebook and they got no content, they got, they're not sharing anything, I'm less likely to want to do business with them or to create a relationship with them because I, I just, I, I can't run like, who are they? What kind of person are they? And when you see someone who's putting out content, videos, long form like this, and they get to hear them talk on and on, that's why some people will say, like for Pace as an example, some people feel like they're best friends with Pace and they've never met Pace. Yep. Because they, they've consumed so much of his content, hours upon thousands of hours yeah. of his videos, that they're like, man, I, I wish I could be friends with Pace because I resonate the way he talks, his, his view on life, his view on business. And so that's the other thing I say for the viewers, if you're out in this game in real estate, you're building and cultivating relationships, the number one thing, and that's why me and, and Javier partnered up, and, and my goal is to blow his brand up so more people get to know, like, and trust him. It's already blow up. Crazy. Digitally, right? He's already done such a great job and groundwork already by himself. He's, I mean, I'm impressed by how many people and how many uh, people he knows and how many people know of him in the Orlando market before. And he's not really online, but he's built so many relationships over the last 15 years in real estate. Now it's we're going to magnify it. I want to take that same energy into a digital. So when people come across this video here or other videos, and you want to do business with Javier, you want to bring him a deal, you want him to partner with you on a deal, the, the trust has been built already through an evergreen kind of source, which is helpful content. So I hope you're watching. That's the takeaway you guys need to take away from you know, watching these videos. Is one, we're dropping tons of knowledge on real estate, pad split, you know, how to hire contractors, how to you know, be as risk adverse as possible, but also taking advantage of the knowledge around putting yourself out there. You can be successful without being on and, and digital marketer or social media you know, influencer, but you, may, you want to magnify it, get online. Yeah. Look at, look at uh, digital media, look at social media, look at it as your passport. It's your footprint, just like you said. Yeah. It's your passport. It talks about you. People can literally, I mean, look, when I, when I go to hire someone, or I have, let's say, uh, I'll make an example, one of my properties, I have a, a tenant that, that's moving in this week at one of my properties that I rent for a bedroom that I don't have uh, pads put on. It's just a small two-bedroom, one bath, so it doesn't make sense to have them, you know, there. But anyway, so I look up, I look up the, the girl on social media, see her lifestyle. You get a, you get a feel like you get, it's like an insight on the person without you literally having to ask them all these questions. Like, don't get me wrong, fill out the application, I'm going to learn a lot about them, I can do a lot about them on the background check and a credit check and et cetera, but you get to see their social profile, you know? And a lot of people's social profile has, like, what high school they went to, where they born, uh, how many times have they moved, um, you, know, are, you, you know, are they into politics, are they not into politics? You can see how much they're posting, you know? It's like spying on somebody without spying on somebody. Maybe you're spying on them. I don't know. Whatever. I mean, I mean, that's why there's a lot of corporate businesses nowadays that use that as a yeah. as a as a part of an interview process. They're like, hey, great, you look good on paper, and you know, background check, resume, that all is great. But let's go check out what you're really like in real life. How do you really live? How are you as a real? Because people want the real person to come work for them. They don't want this fake facade paperwork to get hired. But in this space, that's important. Whether you're looking for or you're looking to partner up in JV in a real estate deal, I want, to, I, I want to be able to see your daily life. Are you married? Do you have kids? Do you know? It, it doesn't matter if you do or you don't, but it just it goes a long way. There's a, there's a reputation that comes when you're a family man or a family woman or you're a single person, but you know, you built a business or you're working you know, nine to five, you're trying to build a hustle on the side. If that story is being told on the internet, I have more faith and confidence to further the relationship and say, hey, you know, yeah, let's, let's do a deal. Let's, let's partner up on this next deal. And I want to put my capital 
and no one's going to want to work with you, no one's going to want to talk with you, no one's going to want to partner with you with anything. And so that there, being online, being in communities, I was able to immediately create a relationship with Javier. And you know what I did right after that? I went check this guy out. We changed it. We exchanged social media profiles. I went check the guy out. I saw that he was online doing stuff. I saw that he was very successful in real estate. I saw that he had some online digital courses already. He already had some sort of a presence out there. It just wasn't magnified. So I was like, you know what? This is a, this is somebody that I do want to partner with. I didn't need to go on like five, six, seven different dates with the guy. I was on one connection because we met at a VIP party through the community. I did some internet research on Javier, saw that there's potential. He's definitely successful, and there's definitely uh, opportunity for me to come in and help. And then vice versa, what am I going to get out of this? I'm going to be able to leverage his experience and his brand, put my skills on top of it, and when he blows up, when he blows up, I get to be that behind-the-scenes integrator, and that's when I get to take my accolades, right? That's when I get to say, yeah, this was the one that helped him grow this to a point, and so we, we become partners on it, but I, it may have not have taken, I would have probably taken a longer time to want to do a uh, partner with him if he hadn't been already somewhat social and already have some sort of footprint on the internet. Yeah. That was huge. It was huge in the beginning. I like, just to get the thumbs up, because I don't partner with a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, speaking of, like, you know, you know, think about this big benefit, right? Like, we're both benefiting massively off each other. Like, just like you said, he's now come in and he's magnified my brand. You know, I'm getting more followers, I'm getting more subscribers, I'm getting a lot more content that I'm getting put out. You guys get to see. And actually, able to give value to you guys, and people are able to learn off of the stuff that I'm doing on a day to day basis. And before, I was, I'm still, I was doing all this stuff, but I just wasn't documenting. The one thing he's, you know, taught me is document, don't create. But on the flip side of this, off of all this, he gets to ride around with me and go to different properties and get to see how I analyze them. And he actually gets to see the construction, to how the acquisition is, to the, you know, if it's a property that I'm doing dispositions on, which typically I don't do, I usually buy and hold, but he gets to see the whole entire process. He gets to pick my brain. Yesterday we're sitting at a coffee shop and he was asking about how 27 and a half year depreciation works. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I, I'm just a phone call away from it. And for him to have access to someone like me as I grow bigger and I'm not going to be as accessible over time, he's he, he's in my pocket. Yep. You know, he gets to take advantage of that. Because now he can say, okay, you know what? You know, I got to ride to Javier with Jacksonville and, you know, I got to see the bad, bad split business model. And, yeah, I love it. Or he might say, I don't like it. And he might say, you know what? This extra strategy is a little bit more advantageous for me. So that's the good thing about it is he can say, look, you know what? I do want to be a buy home investor or I do not want to be a buy home investor. I'd rather just, you know, continue working on the lending thing. He can really analyze it. And because I always tell people when you're getting in real estate, hit one or two things, try it for three to six months. And if you don't like it, then switch. Don't get in real estate and do all this shiny object syndrome stuff because there's a lot of ways to make money in real estate. You can make money so many different ways. And where people get caught up is, is trying to do too many different things at once. One or two things, put them side by side and try it for three to six months. If you don't like it, try it.
this is going back, looping into what we were just talking about, digital media, like, you don't have to be perfect, guys. You don't have to make the perfect video, because the video that you make and you post, you don't realize there's going to be one to two people on social media, minimum one to two people on social media, that's going to have a takeaway. You'd be surprised. It could be even you tying your shoes. Like somebody might be like, oh, wow, I didn't you can tie your shoes that way. Like, you know, just, I mean, just make, be, it, what I, what I say that, I don't really say that sarcastically, but some people might look at it like, holy shit, I just didn't realize I could throw it like that, or I could do this quicker. And I say it because it's simplistic. And so, just know that when you're putting out content, or you're in a room and you're asking a question, other people learn off your questions. Other people learn off of things you're, you're saying. So don't be afraid to say, we're, we're all learning, I'm learning, he's learning. I don't know it all, he doesn't know it all, no one knows it all. But when we get in these rooms and we collaborate, and we, we are around like-minded individuals who are in real estate, and who, wanna, or who, we, who we want to be like, and, you know, when we're around these people, we continue to grow, we continue to blossom. When we're out of our comfort zone, we continue to blossom. There's no growth in comfort. I'm constantly doing things that make me uncomfortable. And that's the only way you're going to continue to grow. If you don't, if you're not uncomfortable, you're staying stagnant. And that's not a good thing. So make yourself uncomfortable, guys, when you're doing it. can be anything. Just make yourself uncomfortable. It could be you going to work out. It could be you making a, a video today or going live on Facebook. A lot of people are, are fearful to go live, actually. That's, that's a, a very big one. A lot of people are, are, are afraid to go live or talk about something. Right? Do a challenge. Do a quick challenge. Do a five-day going live every day challenge if you're, you're going up to be more uh, public on social media. But taking action, small action steps, and climbing up the mountain one foot at a time will get you to the top. We're all climbing to the top one foot at a time. Some of those are going to get up there faster. Some of those are going to get up there slower. But as long as you're taking consistent steps, I promise you you'll make it to the top no matter what. So, no, I, I completely agree. Two things. <clears throat> if you want the q and if you want our previous Q&A session, the session we did in Jacksonville, there will be a link for you to grab access to it down below. Uh, plus, there will also be a follow-up video link that will uh, we'll take you to the actual walkthrough with the students uh, when we had the contractor there. So, two separate links down below. Check it out. That's going to get you to the whole YouTube video where we uh, have our introduction to the member, uh, the members who showed up, the attendees, the walkthrough uh, with the contractor, the Q&A session itself, because it was about 40 minutes long. We're going to have that as a separate video. If you'd like access to that, it's likely the second link down below, and we'll shoot that over to you absolutely free. Um, so yeah, make sure you check the description for everything that we talked about today, but those are going to be two things if you want to check out um, that we've already done. Yeah, that'll be out there. And don't forget, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, at The Real Javier Paredes. Don't forget, every video that we're putting out, we have a very detailed description with a ton of freebies, yeah. a ton of uh, 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 companies that we work with, um, and make sure that you're clicking that description, that way you can get all those uh, good uh, insights of what we're doing, and more description of the video, and some of the companies that we're working with, we have all the links in there for you guys, um, and on Instagram, you can find me at The Real Javier Paredes, but I'm, we're going to be putting out more content like this, we're just getting started, it's 2024 guys, we're just getting started, and we have been putting out three to five uh, uh, shorts a day, which is awesome, and we're going to continue to capitalize on that content, so we want you guys to be a part of that, we want to see, you know, we, we want you guys to see us grow, like, you, we all know that, again, where he's magnifying my brand, and you're going to see right now, I'm just a little tidbit right now, and that's going to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow, so, we'll watch this video two years from now, three years from now, and be like, wow, we were sitting in the bar, going to Jacksonville, looking at a deal, now we're sitting behind office desks, and people are doing all this work, and we're just focused on other tasks, yeah. because as you grow, you delegate, right, as you grow, you bring on team members, and as you grow, not, not only hold the camera anymore, right, like, this is, this is the purpose of scale, yeah. right, so, you know, this is, these are things that we have, you know, in our horizon that we are, so guys, we'll see you guys on the next 